Hi again students, welcome to my CSEC physics tutorials. I am Dane Campbell. In this video, I'm going to be looking at the simple pendulum. The objectives for this lesson are 1. Describe the simple pendulum. 2. Define the terms oscillation, period, length, and amplitude. 3. Investigate the factors which might affect the period of a simple pendulum. And 4. Use graphs of experimental data from simple pendulum. First of all, what is a simple pendulum? A simple pendulum consists of a metal sphere, which is called a bob, suspended by a light inextensible string from a fixed point. The components of the pendulum are the bob, a piece of string, a spit cork, and a stand and clamp. When assembled, the simple pendulum may look like this. So, we have the stand and clamp which is used to hold everything together and here is a string that is suspending the bob from a fixed point below the spit cork. Now let's look at some of the terms that are associated with the simple pendulum. We have oscillation period or periodic time which is indicated by capital T, length which is indicated by lowercase l, and amplitude. Now the oscillation is one complete to and fro movement of the pendulum. The period is the time taken for one oscillation. The length of the pendulum is the distance between the point of suspension and the center of gravity of the bob. So that's between here and here. The amplitude is the angle between the rest position and the extreme position of the pendulum. In a later simulation, we will look more on each of these terms. Now let's examine the motion of a simple pendulum. The motion of a simple pendulum can be said to be first observed by Galileo who looked at a lamp swinging in a church. The motion is similar to that of a swing and is also present in some clocks such as the grandfather clock. Now, what are some of the variables that you may consider when looking at the simple pendulum? Some variables are the length, the mass of the bob, and the amplitude. And we would like to find out how these factors may affect the period of the pendulum. So to do that, we are going to use a simulation of a simple pendulum. This simulation is from the University of Colorado, the FET simulation. And this is the pendulum lab. Now in this simulation, we can show a number of things that are applicable in a real life pendulum. We have a ruler, which we can use to measure the length of the pendulum. And in this case, we are gonna start at 30 centimeters. On the right hand side, we see where we can change the length and we can also change the mass and we can change the gravity. So its default 
on Earth. So we are going to look at the swinging of the pendulum. So we have a start with a small amplitude, no more than 15 degrees. Releasing it, we see that the pendulum will swing. On the lower left side of your window, you can look at the trace of the period. So the period is one complete back and forth movement of the pendulum. And we can see where if we start in the center, so we are going to pause. Starting in the center of the swing, when the pendulum reaches the opposite end, goes through the center and is coming back through the center in the same direction at which you start. That is one oscillation. So the period tr tr trace allows you to look at what is one oscillation. Now we can change the length and see how it affects the period. But first of all, let's use a stopwatch. So we are going to look at, say, 10 oscillations. So we're going to start going, start when it goes to the center. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So that's 11.14 seconds. And then we can increase the length. So we're going to increase the length. And say at 0 0.4 meters. We're going to allow the pendulum to swing once more. And then we time 10 oscillations. So let's say we start now. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So that's 12.81 seconds. So we see that the length of the pendulum will affect the time it takes to make one swing. Now we can also change the mass. So change the mass and keep the length constant. So let's use the same 12.81 seconds for 10 swings. Then we change the mass, let's say we put it at 0 0.2 kilograms. And let's see if the mass affects the, the swing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10. So 12.83 seconds. That's not significantly different because before we had 12.81 seconds. So the mass of the pendulum we can deduce does not affect the time it takes to make one swing. Another factor is the gravity. So we can say using the gravity on the moon. So already we see that the pendulum swing is swinging much slower. 
and so we know that gravity is one of those factors that affect the length that affect the period sorry of the pendulum now we have one more factor and that's the amplitude so we had started at 15 let's say we put the pendulum to swing from 30 degrees and we time 10 oscillations again so going from no one two three four five six seven eight nine ten twelve point nine zero so we see the amplitude does not necessarily affect the period however we don't in a real situation, we don't want the pendulum to be swinging from a very wide angle. So the factors that we look at were the length, the mass of the bob, gravity, and the amplitude. So which factors affect the period? We know the length and gravity. From the simulation, we have seen that from this list of factors, only the length affects the period of the pendulum. Another factor that affects the period would be gravity. But once we are doing the experiment in the same location, gravity would be constant. Now, experiments have shown that the period of the pendulum is related to the length and gravity by this equation which reads t that's the period is equal to 2 pi square root of l divided by g so the relationship between the period and the other factors are not a, a straight linear relationship now let's look at how the data from an experiment on the simple pendulum may be applied now we know that t is equal to 2 pi square root of l divided by g and we can manipulate this equation to make g the subject in other words the simple pendulum is a useful apparatus for measuring the acceleration due to gravity so if we want to find the acceleration due to gravity we can use this equation and the results from a simple pendulum experiment now these are some typical results that may be found from an experiment with the simple pendulum so we have measured the time taken for 20 oscillations two times at different lengths and then we're going to use the average so if we plot a graph of L against T squared then we know that to get the acceleration due to gravity we simply multiply the gradient of that graph by 4 pi squared in order to get these values of t and t squared we have to divide the average by 20 so t is the time for one oscillation and these times are for 20 oscillations so we divide by 20 to get the values of t So these are our t values and then we square t so squaring the t values we get the t squared values so in 
the next step what we'll do is to plot a graph of l against t and also l against t squared so that the relationship between them can be obtained so here is our table and the first graph is l against t and what we see is that it's a curve going upwards so the relationship between l and t is not linear so l and t are proportional to each other but not in a direct way in our second graph we look at l against t squared and this graph shows that l and t squared are directly proportional because we have a straight line now the gradient from this graph is calculated to be 0 0.24 meters per second squared and as we said before if we multiply the gradient by 4 pi squared we can get our value for g so doing that we see that the value for g is 9.86 meters per second squared now this value is a reasonable value if we should compare this value to the actual gravitational acceleration it is well within the range so the simple pendulum can be used to obtain a fairly accurate value for the gravitational acceleration thank you for watching please remember to subscribe like and share and for tutoring services in math biology chemistry and physics check out my website www.onlinesciencetutor.net you can follow us on facebook at csec science tutor one and on instagram at online science tutor thank you again and look out for more videos